Comesa region has a geographic coverage of 13 million square kilometers and is inhabited by more than 400 million people. Out of the world livestock population, it is estimated at 3.5 billion, 26.32% of it is found in Africa. According to FAO 2012 data, the Comesa region has a livestock population of about 143 million cattle, 115 million sheep, and 117 million goats. This is a clear demonstration of the potential the region holds in supporting the development of the leather value chain. Given the scenario, 17 heads of state of the Comesa signed a charter to establish the Comesa Leather and Leather Products Institute to spearhead the development of the leather value chain in the region. Comesa LLPI was mandated to promote productivity, competitiveness, trade and integration in the leather sector. The institute was officially opened for the operation in 1993. The history of LLPI establishment takes us back to 1988, which is about 27 years, when the former PTA, Preferential Trade Area, uh, approved the formation of the a leather, leather and Leather Products Institute. Leather and Leather Products Institute uh, is mandated by 17 heads of state and it was established in 1990. It was given a charter to spearhead the development of the leather sector in Africa, in particular in Comesa region, and ensure that the integration of trade within the leather sector can be realized at both national, regional and global levels. This is the principal mandate of Leather and Leather Products Institute. With a vision to establish competent leather and leather product center of excellence for regional and global competitiveness, the Comesa LLPI is mandated to promote and develop the regional leather sector through implementing six activities under the following strategic areas. Regional human resource development, material and technology development, investment and trade promotion, collecting and disseminating information, consultancy and extension services, and regional integration. As an institute, we are also driven by strategic plans, and we have a medium-term strategic plan that enumerates all the activities that are supposed to be done for every other five years, which particularly identified areas of gender empowerment, um, small-scale uh, industry development within the sector, uh, building capacity, making sure that research and development uh, takes a primal uh, you know, stage, so that all this could drive the growth and development of the leather sector within uh, the Comesa region. Regional human resource development focuses on promoting cooperation among the LLPI member states in training personnel in the leather sector at various levels of the value chain. The trainings are targeted at tannery supervisors, production managers, designers, chemists, artisans and SMEs. Training of course varies. LLPI uh, gives uh, trainings to uh, livestock herders, livestock keepers, in the form of awareness creation workshop. We give uh, training to uh, small and medium enterprises, artisans, in the form of uh, uh, training. We have also empowered our small uh, scale industries so that they can be able to meet the demand which is very huge in Africa. We are talking about over 800 million pairs, and we can only supply 160 million pairs in Africa. We have trained approximately 400 SMEs in footwear making. And our approach to training has been informed by a needs assessment. We have not just done generic training, because we've realized that uh, generic trainings are costly, 
in terms of money and in terms of time. We assessed their products and identified the weaknesses. And our trainings were targeting those weaknesses. So it's a quantitative output in terms of numbers. But on the outcome side, we've seen the change in quality and also the appreciation by the market to buy from the SMEs. I think uh, the coming in of uh, Comesa LLPI in collaboration with the SMEs in Zimbabwe, I think it has actually helped a lot because we've actually seen the growth of a cluster that we've actually developed in Blawayo. It has got about 50 members in which we are doing um, contributions towards the cluster. And that initiative was actually brought in by Comesa LLPI. So for us, we are grateful that Comesa LLPI came in and it's actually helping us with the cluster initiative. Also, curriculums are developed for vocational education institutions in member countries for three countries. Uh, level one to three curriculum and diploma curriculum were developed. A manual was also prepared for use by member countries to improve the leisure sector. Material and technology transfer is a second pillar and revolves around advancing research and development activities on raw hides and skins, work methods, indigenous chemicals and materials used in leather manufacture. This program area also focuses on testing, calculation and development of rock and raw materials such as tanning chemicals. We are also now making sure that we are collaborating with world partners so that the world partners can come and help us in the technology transfer, which is part and parcel of LLPI's mission to make sure that we avail the best technology for our SMEs and other operating uh, uh, functions within the leather value chain. We facilitate, organize visits of enterprises to advanced institutions and enterprises to learn and see what is going on there. As part of investment and trade promotion, so last year, uh, in 2014, more than 60 small and medium enterprises were sponsored to participate in trade fairs in seven member, other member countries. Comesa LLPI co-organizes, sponsors, and participates in regional trade fairs to enhance the intra-regional trade. The focus area of investment and trade promotion deals with enhancing investment and trade competitiveness through the leather value chain from animal raising to hides and skins production, leather processing and manufacturing and their trade at the national, regional and global levels. Collecting and disseminating information on value addition activities, the fourth pillar of LLPI aims at collecting and disseminating pertinent information on leather and leather products in the Comesa subregion. The areas of information mainly focuses on technology transfer as well as on new leather and leather products design and development. Information collection and dissemination is one of the mandates of uh, Comesa LLPI. Toward this disease, we use different instruments uh, to disseminate and, uh, information related to leather uh, and leather products, production, marketing, and standardization. For the last two and a half years, we have been collaborating with LLPI in terms of leather development. And this is, that collaboration has brought several positive things in our sector. One, our private sector has been able to interact with other private sector players in the region. And that way they have been able to run what the other people are doing. They have also been able to know where they can source their own raw materials, 
where can they, so, uh, they can come to Ethiopia and get finished leather. They can make shoes and probably sell them to, to Burundi. Because at least we are, we are sharing information. We know where the material is, is and where the market is. So the collaboration is, with the RIPI has been very positive. To be very frank, for my, uh, for my personal business, uh, knowing more about uh, the potential capacities of different countries, the production, the products, and uh, the opportunities had opened my eyes a lot about uh, trying to, to go into business with a lot of uh, regional countries. This is on my personal uh, experience, and uh, I think really uh, it helped me a lot of, uh, of thinking seriously of expanding my business outside of my country. We have a plan uh, to introduce and to develop an online learning management system. Uh, so that to avoid or to minimize the geographical limitations or the geographic barriers of uh, learning uh, within the region and even uh, globally. Uh, and it's to be started to develop this 2015 and will be functional uh, in the starting as of uh, 2015. of LLPI through the provision of consultancy and extension services in the Kamesa sub-region is the fifth pillar or program area of LLPI. It's being implemented to ensure quality services. In connection with the consultancy services, the regional institution is mandated to provide consultancy. As per the Article uh, 17 of the LLPI Charter, establishing the LLPI, the institute may charge from any services in the form of consultancy and assistance obtained through projects prepared by the institute to implement its mandated objectives. Beyond the training, the Leather and Leather Products Institute also supported the Mali government at our request to uh, come up with a strategy for the leather sector. We are, we are going to, uh, to launch that strategy probably sometime in February uh, after government has approved in terms of the dates and, and timing of that particular launch. So that's where we stand as the leather uh, sector. As consultancy and extension service, last year we have made memorandum of understanding with globally renowned institutions in the leather sector research and development. Uh, this will enhance the capacity of the institute to provide consultancy and extension service. We did baseline survey study in five member state countries to, to assess the current situation of the sector and develop uh, intervention activities that are geared towards the gaps that are identified. We know that we cannot do development without partners. So we have identified the best premier institutions in the world to work with. And I'm happy to say that in 2015, one of the achievements is that we have a working MOU with most of the best premier institutions in the world. Central Leather Research Institute is one from India. We have the Turkish uh, leading university like Ege University. We have also said, instead of looking at the best in the world, we also look at the best in the region. So we have the Sudanese, the University uh, of Sudan, uh, which deals with technology. 
We have Makerere University, uh, which deals with business education. And also we have um, uh, Copastone University in uh, Zambia. And we are working hard to see if we can get the National Science and Technology University in Zimbabwe to come and join us. Recently, we have just signed an, an MOU to set up an incubation of leather with the National, uh, I mean, Dedan Kimathi University in Kenya. And all these are in an effort to make sure that we have both regional and international um, higher uh, scientific uh, and technological institutions that can help us drive this particular agenda of uh, technology renaissance in Africa. Aiming at regional integration, however, remains the most crucial pillar of LLPI. It is focused on not only addressing cross-cutting issues such as gender parity, youth empowerment, livestock as well as heights and skin diseases, environmental management and HIV and AIDS, but also through mainstreaming these issues in LLPI activities in member countries. So these are some of the tools that LLPI is utilizing to its very, very uh, success. And we have milestones that we have set, and some of them to date are issues like harmonizing the curriculum development of our training institutions in Africa. We have also empowered our small uh, scale industries so that they can be able to meet the demand, which is very huge in Africa. We are talking about over 800 million pairs and we can only supply 160 million pairs in Africa. So to, uh, for us to make sure that our SMEs can actually close the gap, we need to build their capacities, which we are doing. I think over the past two years, uh, the operations of uh, LPI have been transformed with respect to its relationship with member countries and the stakeholders in the leather value chain. I would say that our relationship is now better than it was before. And this is mainly because of the kind of activities that we have implemented. First and foremost, the formulation of strategies have brought uh, LLOPI closer to member countries and also the stakeholders. Because what we have seen is that uh, in most member countries, they've been lacking the focus and also the collaboration aspect. The way we formulate our strategies through a participatory process is assisted stakeholders in these countries to realize the importance of working together. So in all the countries that we've worked, which I think are numbering nine now in terms of strategies, they've realized the importance of working together. And the moment we intervene, we formulate a strategy, there's been a significant shift in approach with the government officials, private sector, big enterprises and small enterprises, realizing the importance of working together. In my view, it's a qualitative, but a very important achievement. The first one is that the LLPI has been providing technical assistance to our SMEs in terms of training, especially the artisans who make the finished product. Secondly, the LLPI contributed a lot in the development of our draft national leather and leather policy, which is about to be approved by government as a blueprint for developing the subsector. But also, in addition, the LLPI has helped us to craft a strategic plan for implementing the policy. So we've been working together in that line. They've also helped us in collection of data about our SMAs who are involved in this sector.
The leather value chain comprises of four main segments. First, it deals with the recovery of hides and skins from slaughtered animals on frames and in slaughterhouses. Second, it emphasizes on the conversion of hides and skins into leather in tanneries, which normally requires substantial investment on equipment. Third, it entails the production of leather products. And finally, it aims at ensuring marketing of intermediate and end products in both domestic and export markets. The development of the leather and leather products in the region encounters various constraints which are interrelated and do not occur in isolation from each other. The main challenge in the region is low value addition as the region contributes only 1% to the global trade in value addition despite having a significant amount of livestock. This is chiefly caused by the following factors. The first constraint is related to hides and skins production, including lack of system skills, poor husbandry practices, low recovery of hides and skins, thus low quality, and lack of grading and pricing system. The second core constraint, which is related to leather processing and production, is caused by lack of management skills, poor considerations of environmental problems, insufficient diversification and specialization, and non-consideration of value additions resulting in poor quality of finished leather. The third constraint revolves around leather products and is chiefly caused by lack of skilled manpower and labor management, inadequate costing and pricing, lack of access to fashion trends, low market competitiveness, which resulted in poor market penetration. The fourth constraint deals with the overall chain, which constitutes factors such as weak, poor market information, weak services, and poor negotiation power, thus weak image. This constraint is also related to lack of trained technicians and support staff, inadequate supportive equipment and facilities. This becomes particularly critical to LLPI since it's the major coordinating body for the regional development of the leather industry. It is in view of these backgrounds that the medium-term strategic action plan has been initiated since 2010 and being implemented to address the above listed challenges affecting the leather industry in the Comesso region. Africa already it possesses 21% of the total livestock uh, population in, in the world. Unfortunately, we are only benefiting from 3.3% you know, value of, of what we are producing. This huge gap tells us that value addition is something we have to do. And that is why as an institution which is responsible to drive the leather sector, we want to be very focused in the next 10 years and say that we are going to deal with the SMEs as our input uh, entry area where we can then stimulate this particular sector to achieve and sustain and also meet of the emerging demand on footwear and leather goods.